Greetings. Today we're going to be looking at the Autosaver ElectroShield cathodic protection system for cars. If you want to discuss the ins and outs of whether this is or is not a whole load of snake oil, uh, you can feel free to look in the comments. I'll be putting a link in the video description to another website which discusses some of this stuff. But I'm going to have a look at this one in particular. There are various others on eBay as well. You'll see all sorts of rust protectors, electronic rust protectors on eBay. And they may or may not fall into the same category as these. So in the box, what do we got? I had this for ages, by the way. I bought this years ago. We have a remote anode. The main anode. There was some wax in the thing as well, and a harness to collect to connect them together. And it just plugs in. There's one lead, which plugs in to that. The other end plugs in there, and when you give this power, you get some nice flashing lights to indicate that it claims it's doing something. And if you look at these units on the bottom, both of these have this sprung contact to make contact with the car's bodywork. And on the back of the box, we've got all the instructions for how you fit this to your car and supposedly protected from rust, electronically. Before I pop one of these open, let's just see how much power they draw. And with no electrodes connected, it's drawing about 30 milliamps, going up and down variance likely as the LEDs come on. If the electrodes are connected, it does go off the scale there, so I'll need to measure on the 10 amp range. So again, you can see we got 30 milliamps, if I ground the electrode, it's up to just under 60 milliamps. I'll see if I can ground. Well, I'll ground the other one as well. See if that see if that makes a difference. So there again, it's with the electrode connected. It's 50 odd, about 55 milliamps. And if I put the two together, joining the electrodes together makes no difference. They just it's just 30 milliamps again. And if I ground the electrode once more, it goes up to a total of 80, uh, yeah, just 80, 80 odd milliamps. So it's obviously doing something, but what? Well, let's take a look inside. But before I do, take a look at one of these. They both look much the same. On the back, there's some double-sided tape so you can stick it down onto the bodywork with that uh, with the bodywork roughed up to make good contact but I've no idea what's inside yet we'll take a look now well surprisingly it's not particularly well fastened uh, there's no I've just taken the adhesive off the bottom there's no screws this just pried off um, I don't know how it was fixed I think it was literally just push fit together but uh, there's the uh, electrode contact, which contacts that spring, which contacts this board, which let's see what's on the other side. Popping this nice spirally track. Ooh, must be doing something, eh? That's it. But this is the remote anode anyway, so I wouldn't expect very much to be in here. So that's that. Take a look at the other one. Ooh, there's lots more going on in this one, isn't there? Let's put that to one side and pop the spring out and again pry the board out and see what we've got in here. Not very much. There's a chip there which, well, everything's all covered in conformal coating, so it's Hard to make out what the chip is, but let's see what this board is. Let's um, sketch it out. Well, 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 welcome to Snake Oil Central. Now, in the manual, well, if you can call it a manual, on the back of the box, it says that the green power light, 
will remain on constantly, indicating the unit is energised. And the two red lights will flash, indicating power to the anodes. Well, let's take a look and see what the schematic says. Here we go. I'll take a look over on the right to start with. Over on the right, you can see we've got a 7809 voltage regulator feeding an E555 timer, which in turn is running both LEDs in series. So the anode 1 and anode 2, they're just flashed by that. And you can see just to the left of that, in between there and the regulator, we've got the power on one as well. You can see I've also marked off, I put that grey bar down the middle of the schematic, because all that's going from one side of the schematic to the other at that point is 12 volts and ground. So those LEDs bear no relation whatsoever to what is going on with the anodes. So already on the back of the box, they are lying through their teeth. They are talking absolute rubbish. But what's driving those anodes? Well, what we've got is a pair of 7805 regulators. What look like transistors on the board are actually five volt regulators. And this nine volt one drives the timer, as already mentioned. Those regulators, all they do is they connect via a 220 ohm resistor into this weird coil on the back and then straight into the bodywork. And the other end, rather than connecting straight down to ground, they've got a pair of, of diodes as well, so they're just offset above that little bit more above ground. But on all this is doing, it's like just connecting a battery to your car with the ground connected to the bodywork because the bodywork is grounded and sticking the anode of the battery onto the bodywork, which is exactly what these are. All it's doing is like connect, it's like taking a lantern battery and just jabbing it into your bodywork. It's well, I'll leave everyone to discuss the ins and outs of how on earth these could actually work on a car. I'll leave that to the comments. Hope someone finds this useful. Obviously, if you want to build one of these, you don't need all of all of that. Or in fact, even you don't need one, um, two of these. All you need is those two rectif uh, those two regulators, those two resistors, maybe a weird and wacky coil on the back, and just jab it straight into the bodywork of your car and hope for the best. Thanks for watching.